This video is proudly sponsored by Rocket Money. Monthly subscription costs add up over time. You think you're not spending that much, but the financial bleed through can slowly creep up. The average person thinks they're spending $70 a month on subscriptions, but it's more like over $200 a month. Even when trying to keep track of everything, things fall through the cracks. And this is where Rocket Money helps out. They're an all-in-one asset that safely gathers your accounts, identifies recurring expenses, and alerts you to upcoming bills. But where they really shine is that they can cancel subscriptions or renegotiate monthly fees on your behalf. I've used it to my advantage on more than one occasion. And to me, that alone has been worth the price of admission. As added perks, I can routinely check on my credit rating and set up a smart savings account where I can deposit and withdraw funds at any time. There are currently 3.4 million converts to Rocket Money. A two-week free trial could convince you as well. Just go to rocketmoney.com slash tree to get started or unlock more features with premium. I will never stop stressing about the importance of money management in this day and age. All you have to see as evidence is the subject of this video. Ace fans, I wish I had any sense of optimism about the team. I want to tell you that all is going to be well, but it probably won't. Barring a sudden change of heart on both sides, there's a good chance the A's are going to be moving out of Oakland in the next few years. It will probably be Las Vegas they pack their bags for, but there may be another suitor or two. It was too quiet. It was far too prolonged. There was no news happening on the Howard Terminal front for months on end. There were too many hints signaling that Las Vegas was becoming the primary target. It didn't feel like if the A's were moving away, but when? To a quiet announcement in the middle of the night on a Wednesday. The A's have a deal in place for land in Las Vegas. The city of Oakland was ceasing negotiations with the team and were moving on. The Oakland A's will most likely soon be no more. If official, the city will be losing its third professional sports team in a decade. The final days of this franchise in Oakland will be in hospice care. John Fisher will reap a fortune for running a team into the ground. The last time I talked about the A's, they couldn't make moves due to the owner's lockout. But the grumblings of cutting team payroll were too great to ignore. Rumors of them shedding over half of it down to $40 million in 2022 felt more in tune with reality than doom prophesizing. When it's respected journalists and repeated sources highlighting it, the question is how much are they going to gut? We now know the answer to this question. Everything. This is not an exaggeration. Everyone that had been due for arbitration raises that offseason? Gone. Anyone who could play baseball that would cost money? Gone. And it's still going to this very day. All that's left of this husk are lottery tickets that you hope cash out and pieces picked up at a thrift store. The final concoction is a team that costs a touch more than Max Scherzer's yearly salary. Is anyone surprised at how bad the A's have been since the start of last year? It's roster filler and a bunch of hopes and prayers. It's how you free fall to a 100 loss season. It's how you have a no hitter going into the eighth and somehow end up losing the game. It's how you start a season six and 26. Who the hell would want to watch this? Why would any self-respecting Oaklander plop money down with increased prices on tickets, mind you, to torture themselves with Moneyball Skeleton? Note how attendance figures were on the way down back in 2021? It's gotten worse since then. Last year, the A's had attendance figures below 3,000 people for the Orioles. They had gone from a franchise that was averaging over 20,000 per game to under 10. With the move all but imminent, the numbers are down to 2,500. Allegedly. Be lucky to find 250 people who showed up to that contest. I can vouch I was there last year and it just felt empty. The crowd that was there tried their hardest to be passionate, but it was a mere whimper of what it had been. I need to once again reiterate this is not the fault of the fans. Even though anyone with common sense can figure that out. This is on John Fisher and Dave Cavill. For years they've done everything in their power to alienate the team from the city they play in. The evidence is crystal clear. It's in how they've treated the A's over the past decade. It's in the resistance of John Fisher to do an interview and be seen as someone who actually cares about the team and city. It's in the Howard Terminal saga. Howard Terminal was the last gasp. The final chance in a series of botched or extremely sabotaged proposals throughout the years. There was Fremont, which fell through. There was a move in the works to San Jose, but the Giants stabbed them in the back because of greed. Laney College. Nothing has worked. Yet the whole time I was hearing the proposal, Howard Terminal felt like a pie-in-the-sky pipe dream. Something you throw out there as a cynical value grab. If it somehow works out, great, you get the baseball field that's the envy of the league and the value of your franchise skyrockets. If not, you can just throw your hands in the air and say you pretended to try as you move the team elsewhere. The thing is that there was progress being made on the project. It was 
going through the 11 billion loopholes that the state of California put in. Environmental regulations and workers' coalitions alike. Around the time I made the last video, more than a few Ace fans were saying that I was wrong and I'd be eating my words about the project sooner or later. And to be honest, I wish I had been. I've dealt with the same damn thing. The Penguins were about 48 hours away from moving to Kansas City back in the day. But there was still the issue in the back of my mind. I've seen this situation play out in the past. I saw it in Montreal, in San Diego, in St. Louis, and even in Atlanta. Fisher and Cobble didn't really want to stay in Oakland merely wanted to raise the value of their franchise at any cost. You don't raise such exponential value by staying loyal. If one thing doesn't work out, you quickly move to another. The problem with Howard Terminal wasn't the concept itself. It's that it took too long. I expected the deal to get done last year. And the A's did as well. Sometime in the middle of it all, everything just stalled. You can blame nearly everything under the sun, but to have any shot of this panning out, it had to be expedited through. Then came the predictable snags. And some were wondering if the taxpayers of Oakland were in fact going to be on the hook for some of the project. If that wasn't bad enough, the city lost out in a nine-figure federal grant to overhaul transportation infrastructure to Howard Terminal. Oakland needed everything to go right and it just hasn't. You can't blame the city for not being able to move heaven and earth, they don't have any money. It just felt doomed from an outsider's perspective. They had to get it done with haste and they couldn't. The fact that everything under the sun had it stuck in quicksand hurt the endeavor. And then city council changed over due to term limits. The new city executives weren't overly enthused by the project, at least from the terms agreed to. And it gave the ace the perfect excuse to simply use them as a negotiating springboard. It honestly feels like baseball is pushing them away. All the hints being given, MLB removing the relocation fee for a move. Rob Manfred saying that the A's were favoring Las Vegas in negotiations and several less than vague comments. Let's be clear, if the Athletics really wanted to stay in Oakland, they'd have found a way to do it. John Fisher merely wants an increase in franchise value for a future sell. Wherever it may be. MLB wants to tap into the Las Vegas market by means of this team or future expansion. Oakland isn't seen as the sexy option for a franchise. Especially since San Francisco is next door. And time is of the essence. Baseball has stated that the A's won't qualify for revenue sharing if they don't have a stadium planned out by next year. Which would hurt since they still made tens of millions of dollars in profit in 2022. Rewarded for taking a hatchet to the franchise. It's pathetic. This is how you get a franchise at the 11th hour merely counting the days like a kid waiting for summer break. An ownership group ready to move on, leaving over 55 years of history in the dust. Worst of all, it's not to anywhere the fans can tolerate or a city that could embrace them whole. It's to Las Vegas, a hotbed of sin and sloth that took the Raiders from them before. We all know what's gonna happen. The A's will get the stadium they want, yet it'll be full of opposing fans wanting a distraction from a weekend of debauchery. Just ask Mark Davis how that's been going for him so far. Morphing from a proud franchise to a novelty thrown around at casinos is a perk. And it's sadly a more viable outcome for them than staying in Oakland at this point. Even worse, Las Vegas is lukewarm towards their arrival. Both the local populace and politicians could take them or leave them. Feels like there's no red carpet like the Raiders got. The whole operation feels soulless. Yet it'll proceed because John Fisher wants money for nothing. The only hope for Oakland is a Hail Mary. And that's if the A's don't get gobs of public funding to build a new stadium in Las Vegas. It's a possibility. And Oakland is open to talking with the team again. Oh god, Fisher and Cobble don't have the funding in place yet. The A's made a rash decision and don't have a concrete plan for the $500 million in public funds they want. Their dream scenario was starting to crumble in front of them and are now looking at different locations for their field of half-baked schemes. Please have this blow up in the A's face. I want to laugh like a goddamn hyena. It will fuel me for an eternity. We can point fingers as to who's to blame. We can debate as to the potential future demolition of Oko and what will become of the Howard Terminal Project. However, the politicians and team executives will move on. The ones that really get fucked over are the fans. The ones that devoted themselves to following the A's. The ones that persisted through decades of skinflint ownership disguised as a lovable underdog. The ones being used as emotional pawns for both sides of a fruitless proxy war that lasted way too long. And the ones that just got the rug pulled out from under them. They just wanted the team to stay. And now they may have nothing to show for their frustrations. And this saga is seemingly far from over. The deadline for the ace pursuit of funding in Las Vegas is in early June when the state's legislative session adjourns. 
What happens if the city they want to move to tells them to fuck off? Fisher and Cobble sure as shit can't go back to Oakland. That bridge has been burned and then burned again. Ideally, he'd sell, but Fisher's a businessman. And savvy businessmen don't sell their assets at a loss. In my heart of hearts, I feel that Fisher is simply going to move to Las Vegas at a reduced deal just so he can maintain his pride. And it'll be a grave mistake for the game itself. What will there be in this new location that is somehow better? A red airing of a stadium and a John Fisher looking to sell the team at markup? Over the past 20 years, the A's have had their souls ripped out of it. And all that's left are four championships and the husk of a once proud franchise. Memories are the only thing that can comfort A's fans. And this horrible situation is living proof of it. It's a ground ball to the right side, steered by Phillips, flips Eckersley, yes! He's there in time and the A's are the world champions.